I still think that's the best bet. Then, if you want to open a store that's going to sell marijuana, you would have to go to the town council and get the town to approve it. I think that's a fair assessment. The second problem I have, if we're going to go forward and allow this, we're going to pick what is it chooses by limiting the number of stores that are going to sell this. We've heard testimony that marijuana is actually safer than alcohol in many aspects. We sell alcohol in every community practically throughout the state. If we're going to put this on the same playing field as alcohol, why not distribute it the same? Go through the state, the same as we do with our spirits. That way you have a certification to make sure that we know what you're selling and people know what they're buying. If not, who knows? Yes, I see in here there's certain guidelines, but make sure we meet those guidelines. I, that's just a couple of my issues. Prop 17. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, when we started this process, uh, uh, started this possible to make a presentation. In my notes, I made, I made a couple of notes here that you made the statement that regardless of the outcome of this particular committee, the citizens' initiative was going to move forward. Is that true? Yes, I'd like, to, I'd like to just get to the bottom of some of this. Sure. Representative Timmons, were you here for my discussion about the citizens initiative process and how that works? Yes. Okay, because that really answers it. Um, if the committee does not, if the legislature does not pass something this year, then the initiatives will move forward. And that's my point. So if you decide to do nothing, you decide to ought not to pass it outright. It's going to be before you, be before you most likely in 2017, and you're going to have the same discussion that you're having now. The difference will be that it's the choice of how to craft the policy will have been made largely before for you, as opposed to you designing the policy. So that's my point. Irrespective of what you do, if you choose to if you choose to vote against the bill, then you end up in a position where you have no control over it. If you do choose to support uh, a bill and move that forward and send it to referendum, then you'll be in a better position policy-wise. But this bill, some version of legalization, will be going to referendum in 2016. It will either come from the people or it will come from us. That's what I mean. Irrespective of what happens, there will be a 2016 referendum. I believe that we would be better ch uh, charged with crafting a policy, hearing from folks all across the state like we have, and crafting that policy that people get to decide on, as opposed to the, the yellow and the blue sheet in front of you. Representative Long? <coughs> oh, you're down Representative I'm sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, by this one of the referendum, we may be in the same place we are now. Uh, you hear different reports from different people you want to listen to about this in the past, and this is in the past. Uh, I would have my own opinions on that, but uh, I still trust the citizens of Maine to make the right choices, and I always have. So, if yeah, the citizens want to bring them to the board, I know the problem. We have term limits and a number of other issues that brought forward, but the we agree with the problem, we abide by it. So, I trust the citizens. Okay. Very, I'm just going to respond to that if I could. It goes back to the idea that um, you're still going to have to make the same policy decisions that you're making now. Because many of that, many of the pieces that we're talking about are not flushed out because the citizens' initiative process means you have to have the bill attached. So it's not about trusting the citizens or not. I also trust the citizens. I have my name on two referendum in two, two referendum in 2016. The difference is, I think that this is a policy that really does need to be flushed out, and I really do think that folks need to. It's not about crafting it, and uh, when you craft a citizens' initiative, those of us that craft citizens' initiatives get to craft it without input from other people. Um, I think Mr. Hoyer and I have done a lot of work to try to make sure that those the people from all across the state have been able to weigh in on the drafting of it. The problem is that you have to keep that entire bill attached to the petition. It gets heavy, and so you have to get it down to a scale of the bill. It's not about 
about trusting the people or not. I think the people are going to vote for it. Um, I wouldn't put my reputation on it if I didn't. The difference is have a fleshed out version that's been um, crafted in an open and transparent way. If folks don't want to do that, that's fine. But from 2017, we're going to have to deal with this anyway. I'm not sure I'm going to be here. Did you have a follow up? No. Yep. Senator Jazowski. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Nice to see you again. Yes. Um, a lot of your uh, debate last time, last mm-hmm. year, and I've heard that the chair we're talking about it right now. Yeah. The difference of uh, us sending out to the voters and the voters sending out to the voters. And the difference in our abilities to try and, and Regulate it and try and control it somewhat. The two different methods. I think that you do gambling as an example. Either you have or I have. Somebody has. I think we have. Um, Senator Valentino certainly has. But I mean, I think the closer analogy in some respects is the medical marijuana policy, um, the 2009 referendums. There were a whole host of changes that the, that the uh, legislature had to make after that was approved that dispensaries were authorized. Originally, it was unlimited dispensaries. The idea was that caregivers, like in Colorado, would be able to be owned, turn into retail establishments, and that was the goal. And in fact, that's why Colorado um, is a little bit different than the structure that I presented here, because the legislature decided that there should only be eight zones. and. That has limited the dispensaries, the retail outlets, and that has been part of the cause of friction within, within the industry. I don't necessarily think that was a great policy choice. It wasn't really openly debated in the legislature. I was a freshman when it came before us. Um, I thought that if I voted against that bill, I was voting against uh, medical marijuana, and it turns out after the fact there were a whole host of things in that, uh, po- that policy that folks categorically disagreed with. Furthermore, a lot was done in the rulemaking process particularly around patient privacy and patient safety. There's a bill every year we have to fight DHHS. I have a bill in this year, 560, that will change, uh, prevent uh, DHHS from collecting personally identifiable information from patients because we do not want to put patients on a list unless the federal government decides to come in. So there, we had a similar scenario. We passed a bill that was that the legislature did not think was fully crafted. The legislature then had to scramble to put rules in place. And then when they finally did, and we um, crafted legislation, there were every year there were fixes to it, and there was an immediate backlash to the bill that was presented that was passed because there were so many flaws in it. I don't want to have a flawed policy. I want to make sure that if and when we decide to implement marijuana legalization and we remove the prohibition, that we do it right and that we implement it properly. I do not want to scramble in 2017 to try to po- put a policy together. So, 
but from the legislative's perspective, um, you know, from sending something out rather than having citizens put it to the legislature as an initiated bill. So when citizens draft an initiated bill, they put it, give it to the legislature, and it becomes a bill. Right. And so, but if you vote against it, it still goes out of the ballot. If you vote for it, it passes. Here, we're suggesting that you pass some fleshed out piece of legislation and then ask the citizens for their approval. And it's, it, it'll be a different process in, in simply the fact that um, you won't have to collect 61,000, whatever the, the number is right now. People know exactly what it is right now, but it's around 61,000, I believe, um, signatures. You can just simply put it on the ballot and citizens will vote whether or not they, they want it or not. And, and the various sides will make their arguments um, to the people, directly to the people. Is that well, so really, it's just taking the petition part out that makes the biggest difference. Collecting signatures. Collecting signatures. Okay, one first question for Mike. Because I'm looking for this information. And I know Mr. Walker was involved uh, initially when we had the task force set up for medical. Right. And I think you've been involved ever since. Do you see uh, the conflict between Well, it's a good question, and it's something that we, we thought about. We looked at Colorado and see, saw what happened there and in other states. If we, our, our thought here is to create an overlay on top. So the medical marijuana program will continue. It will continue with an overlay of a legalized market on top. We, we believe that people re do need the, 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 the stories and seeing and you know, watching people come in to dispensaries, uh, being treated by caregivers. Um, they're real success stories that are, it really makes a difference. And so and with that individual attention, we don't want to lose that. And also the, the, the larger amounts that they can buy. Very sick people um, with cancer, with, um, with uh, spastic issues, you know, with their muscles, with spastic or with, with uh, seizure issues, they need more than one ounce to be able to buy more than one ounce. So we want to be able to allow them to be able to continue forward. And so I think all of the versions recognize that medical, and there's real, real issues for medical to continue, to have direct attention and also to, to allow for larger amounts to be bought. And then in, in, each of the, in each of these, we don't tax it either. So once it becomes, once we have a legal market, that gets taxed at various levels. Medical doesn't get taxed. So we think it can survive as an overlay on top. Thank you for being here today. Uh, the sheet that we were given to you is a breakdown. Yes. Were you part of it? Yes. Okay, which which the first the first row? The dion roll. Dion. You're on the dion the no, the original one. Alright. Well, I'm just looking at this here and you know, I've some negotiations and stuff. Uh, there's a number of, of uh, bills, I should say bills, a number of directions that we can go into. However, I did notice that in the second, the third line over, where Russell, Diana, and MPP agrees. Yes. Apparently, there's one group that does not agree. Am I correct? Where it says disagree? I guess. Yeah, there are four. Right. There are four. All right. So, okay, so, okay. Russell, uh, there's four in all. Yes. And in that third line, where I just said, Russell and I on MTD agree, does that get three or does that include the four? You know where I am? It, so, three equals in. Each of them, so for example, let's just take the first line, personal possession. So, we're talking about one ounce there, right? So, right. Dion 
Russell campaign to regulate marijuana all agree on that. Legalized Maine is at 2.5 ounces, so they don't agree. Okay. All right. <clears throat> no, I didn't go in. I had I was I, I was somewhere on that that scale. I guess what I I personally what I'd be looking for is all of you have done a great job. You've identified all your areas and everything. In my personal opinion, and to see something that would go to the voters to be agreed upon, is I would like to have one proposal from all four entities that would come forward to this committee so that we don't have to jump all over the place to try to create that particular bill. You follow me? Absolutely. Uh, I think that's critical, and especially for this committee where we have not had as much experience as the four groups that were involved here. So uh, I guess that's what I, I would be looking for. And, we and, and, and from there, based on what you've given us previously, we can look at it and, and uh, uh, like Representative Pinnett uh, asked pertinent questions, um, those may be answered already when that proposal is brought forward, as well as the off in and not the off out section. So we spent a tremendous amount of time this year talking, debating, negotiating, but really from <coughs> Before session even started talking, um, we tried. We really tried. Um, I spent a lot of time with, uh, with everybody back there, and uh, we came we came very close. And so what what we were hoping to do was say, you know, that we have 35 pages of work here, and there's a couple areas that we can't decide amongst ourselves on how to do it. We're looking for your help on, on those issues. So what you're looking at, what you're looking at, this group is uh, mediation, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking more for a judge. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to pull. Yeah. Uh, we're going to pull you guys together uh, as one. Uh, you can't do it on your own. So if today I would agree to the Russell Dion MPP agreement that would be brought forward, would the uh, other individual go out with a people's petition and put out a referendum uh, for themselves, then you'd have two marijuana referendums out there yeah. uh, that would, to me, cloud up the whole situation. Well, we're going to have two, it looks like we're going to have two anyway, and we were hoping to, we handle this a couple of different ways. One was, there's different ideas about this, but to, to put it on the 2015 ballot, you know, it's coming up pretty soon, but right in front of everything, and it would take care of it a year ahead of time. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to um, have something that this legislature uh, supported, put its weight behind, with groups coming forward, coming to an agreement, and then we could all work together and make sure that one, the one that everybody worked on, passed. So I think there's two ways to do it, to affect it at the ballot box. Uh, or it's going to be, you know, you're right, it's going to be a mess, no matter what. Thank you, Madam Chair. I can see that as well. However, I can see how difficult you're putting us uh, as a mediation individual in a position that if you, if four of you, Three of you have come together, but the fourth has not. For us to try to get that individual on board with all the paperwork that you've taken care of, and I'm telling you, you guys did a terrific job here. I have to commend everybody. Uh, how do you expect us to get that fourth individual on board? Yeah, well, we hope that, you know, again, we've been working on this. And there's some, some, there's some big issues, and whether or not, and I think this is something that you've heard different, for example, you know, the idea of retail. Do we want retail to be just like alcohol that can be in every town, or do you want more of a limited? That, that's just a question of policy. That's a question that we have different ideas on that we've been pushing 
closer and closer and closer together on. Um, I don't know, maybe throw us, maybe we could come up with it. We haven't done it yet. We were hoping that maybe the, if you had an opinion that, that on this particular issue, that you could weigh in on and put a little pressure on the various groups. But you're right. I mean, I don't know if there's something that'll make everybody happy. I don't know. This is a question for you, Mr. Walker. It's actually on a purpose of the process bill, just as a clarification. On the chart, I see uh, just a quick discrepancy on the tax revenue allocations. On the above box for Representative Russell's bill, it, I don't see the sales tax piece. It may have been just cut off. And then on the bottom box, it includes a, the first $30 million annually going towards school construction. I just wanted to confirm that that was the intent, because it shows two different things within the same column. Um, and I just, because I don't know why, there's just like two of the same rows, but that discrepancy is there for Representative Russell's bill. I just wanted to clarify that. Is it the first? So it's the second. Look at the second one. It's, it's a repeat of the first one. Look at the first, second box. So, so that second box where um, Representative Russell has the tax revenue allocations, the intent is to have for the sales tax piece to be distributed to the first $30 million annually going towards school construction specifically? Well, and renovation. But it, I had very limited space, as you can see. Okay, yeah. Of In the bill, it's construction uh, and uh, renovation. Okay. Okay, thank you. 